Hello, I'm Roger Bisby from Skill Builder. I've come up to the Weber Training Academy in Flittick in Bedford to look at a product they've got which makes the whole job of laying screeds a whole lot easier. It's a kind of flow screed that you can mix up yourself on site, comes in a bag and it flows out just like that stuff that you get sent in a ready mix lorry, but you don't have to order tanker loads of it. Sounds too good to be true. Let's go and see if it is. So our host for the day, the instructor, Rob Speak from Liverpool, showing us how to cut up a bit of fiberglass mesh with scissors. Never use a Stanley knife because you can cut through the membrane and then uh, you spoil the damp proof membrane. So this is a self-adhesive foam strip. If you can only get the backing tape off it, you can stick it down straight onto the insulation or the subfloor, whatever you're doing. It contains the flow screen, if you like. Now, this flow screen, they've got several different products in the Weber range. You can either mix it up in a tub with a whisk, or you can mix it up by machine, depending on what you're doing. But the idea is that you don't have to worry about putting down a sand and cement screed. You can go straight onto your subfloor or even your insulation with their fibre reinforced screed. And that way you've saved a lot of material. So on the build up, that's really quite important. There's a lot of situations where you have to get a bit of insulation in the floor and you need a screed on top and you really haven't got room for that 50 to 65 millimeters of sand and cement. So this bag product, mix it up. The water content is critical by the way, so don't guess that. Use a good uh, measuring jug to keep the water consistent. And you can see it's got that slightly lumpy look to it. That's the fibers in it. And that bit of fiberglass mesh will actually float up slightly inside the screed. So the screed will get underneath it as well. And basically it gives it tensile strength. If it was any tendon for it to say you were putting it on timber floor or something like that and there's a tendency for it to flex then that fiberglass mesh would do a great job of holding it and stopping it from cracking up and then instead of having to trowel down all you've got to do is agitate it and it'll find its own level to a certain extent there you are that's walking on it four hours later and then you can tile on it the next day so here we are outside after lunch, ready to have our first go at putting in the flow screed, the pump screed. But you can see, and instead of it coming on a tanker, this is a bagged material that you buy from your merchants. Now this machine will mix it and pump it. You don't need to do this. You could, in theory, even if you were doing a sort of 40 bag job, you could have a couple of guys on a double paddle whisk and you could knock it up in tubs and pour it in. Just so long as you kept working to a wet edge. So obviously you wouldn't want to be doing it on too warm a day. You need to think about these kind of things. But I think if you organized yourself, you could do it. But obviously these machines, are a lot faster and a lot easier if you know what you're doing with the machine. I wouldn't recommend hiring one if you've never used one before because I think this is a kind of machine where you need somebody who's got some experience. One of the reasons you need experience is because that water content, it is critical. If you put too much in, it isn't great. And if you don't put enough in, it's hard work. So you can see that it's a very easy thing. This is a 4360 fiber reinforced product. You should just about be able to see the fibers there this will go through the machine and if the job's done right it'll come out at just the right consistency but we've got a little test that we carry out before we start pouring into the room so there is a chance then to add or reduce the water slightly by putting in obviously another bag of powder what you need is a double mix and you get one mix through the machine itself and the next mix comes in the hose as it's making its way down the hose it's given a less now this is the test that you need to carry out to check that you've got the right amount of moisture in it very very simple test Weber can supply you with one of these cups and these targets and then you can see that it just spreads out enough to fill the ring but it's not going over the red ring and that's important if it goes over that red ring it's too wet basically if it doesn't go as far as the blue one it's too dry and, and the thing with screed is you want the biggest amount out possible so 
when you start pouring this it's a good idea to have a guy on the hose one pouring it and the other guy behind what we call a, the cable basher or the hose basher if you like and the guy is just standing behind pulling that hose back so you're not dragging it on the floor or tripping over it yourself because obviously you're working backwards you're working out of the room but basically piece of cake i mean there's no real skill to it once you get that mix right and you know what you're doing you can pour the stuff into the room and you need those tripods just to make sure that you get the thing level because although there's a certain amount of self-leveling capability in it being a very wet liquid you can still end up building up at one end obviously so those little tripods that they use you can buy those if you like if you're hiring a machine you might even be able to hire those as well but they're not that expensive buy some little tripods and then go through and laser level those in and uh, you'll make sure that everything's right. So you can see, rather than having to be down on your hands and knees whacking sand and cement in, you just simply stand there whistling a tune and uh, wait till it fills up, really. Nothing much more to it. Basically, this is only coming out as fast as the guys on the other end can mix it. And you can see the tripods in place there. And if you look, you can see that there's not quite enough material to come up to the underside of that little uh, tripod plate so that's important they would really need to pour a bit more in there to make that level up so that they got it right but I think this fella's going to ignore it totally maybe I'm being harsh on him maybe it is coming up there it doesn't look like it to me but anyway he's moved it around now as it's a test rig I suppose we forgive him the important thing is that you get the recommended minimum thickness this can go over underfloor heating by the way it's absolutely perfect for underfloor heating and of course you get a much faster warm-up time with underfloor heating don't be tempted to lay that reinforcing mesh over the top of the underfloor heating because it has a tendency then to maybe cause a few voids and things so in that case you wouldn't want to be using mesh but the fibers inside the material are sufficient to make it strong you can see he's going back down there now putting a bit more in so he's bringing it up to that datum line but that's it you get one of those little well you can make your own if you want pole on the end of a, a stick bit of steel tubing they do normally put a little mesh over the top like a little sock that goes over the end of this hose just to catch any lumps if they haven't been thoroughly mixed by that machine you don't want lumps dropping into the, the screed so that's it that's the end of my little day at the Weber Academy if you want to see that in a bit more of a coherent form you can go to the Weber site but that was my experience good day out well worth going and they've got a lot of other courses up at the Academy which I will be attending in the near future slightly unusual little video there but I hope you found it useful I'm Roger Bisbee thanks very much for watching and come back soon become a subscriber